Good afternoon. This is Steve Hernandez for Steve Hernandez's uh, Nonprofit Fundamentals. Happy almost new year in 2021 if you're watching this uh, uh, relatively new. This video is going to be about three fundraising, three, <laughs> three fundraising hacks to really increase your development success uh, this year. So uh, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button if you find this uh, video helpful. Hit the notifications button if you want to uh, uh, be notified when you, I, I upload new content. If you would like to follow me on social media, I'm on Instagram at Stephen Hernandez 875 And I also have a podcast called Stephen Hernandez's Relationship and Nonprofit Fundamentals, which you can find on Anchor and wherever pods are cast. So let's get right into it. Three, fu three fundraising hacks to increase your fundraising success this year. Uh, Perhaps the most important thing is a short and sweet, succinct application. Be very clear about what you're what you're asking for for from the funder. Now, it should go without saying that if you're asking for funds, you should have hopefully a good rapport relationship with the funder already. You understand uh, what they fund is it aligned with what you're asking for. Like all that pre work should be done. Always remember that the person who's reading your application is almost certainly not the person who's going to be the decision maker on your application. There's probably an initial staff read through, then they speak with their coworker, then they or their team needs to take it to their director, and it may need to go to a board of directors or a high level, uh, high level co uh, corporate executive if it's a corporate uh, corporate funder. What does that mean? Is that at each one of these iterations, there needs to be a shorter conversation of why we should uh, fund uh, your organization. So, well, and I understand this, having been a fundraiser before, many nonprofit executives and fundraisers want to provide a towering epic of beautiful prose and whatnot. That is great and credit to great skills. But believe me when I say, the more convoluted your application is, the harder it is to make the sales pitch, if you will, internally. What my boss wants to hear, what my coworker wants to hear is, organization ABC wants to do X, and they need XYZ amount of money to do it. I think this is a good thing. I think we can do this. Why? Oh, well, they do this, this, and this. We do this, this, and this. Awesome. We've been looking for a partner to do that. That's great. That's the conversation ideally your application should generate. If your application is dense, if it's full of a lot of insider language, if the if the application is, is burdened with uh, graphs and pictures and information that's not clear, and you know, if at the end of me reading your 10 or 15 or 30 page, like, you know, like, uh, epic, if I can't, like, within one or two sentences describe what it is, A, how much you're asking for, what you're going to do with the money, and why I should care, the application's a fail. Uh, I'm sorry. Like, you know, your application needs to be able to be boiled down very succinctly. Because I need to take it to my boss and say, organization ABC wants to do X. And the ideal response is like, great, we've been looking for a partner to do that. That's wonderful. Let's have a conversation with them. Or that sounds like something we should consider. Because then she needs to pitch it to her boss. And her boss is only concerned is these questions. Does it fit our guidelines? Yes or no? Is the ask reasonable? Yes or no? Is it within our budget? Yes or no? Is this an organization that fits geographically where we want to work? They're typically not going to ask things uh, like, you know, was it what was it twenty pages instead of five? Oh well, you know, they should have written fifteen more pages. Like that's the that's the page limit. No, we don't want that. Okay, short and sweet, very clear line to what we're asking for. Number two, and this is one of those unfair kinds of things: have money already. By that I mean, if your if your project is already funded. So let's say it's a $50,000 project, okay? And you have 40,000, 45,000 uh, spoken for, pledged in hand already. And you're gonna ask us for the last five, the last 10 maybe? That's a way easier ask than um, I need 50 and I don't have anything yet. $5,000 please, $10,000 please, $40,000, $50,000 please. One of the great unfairness of nonprofit fundraising is the, easier, the easiest way to get money is to already have it. And I know that's so, so unfair. So, this is what I always encourage nonprofits to do. 
even if it's just a little bit, if your board members, who should be your primary fundraisers, if they're taking on a big project, if they want you to raise $50,000, the first five, the first 10 should come from them. I don't, ideally, they should be able to cut a check so collectively they can, you know, put down the first five or 10 themselves. If they can't do that, as board members, they should be able to pledge or uh, work their connections to get that five or $10,000. It should come from your board. So then your, then your ask is different. Then, as you step forward as uh, as a uh, fundraiser, you can say, "Our board has already pledged the first five or ten thousand dollars, and we have a good chance of getting another five thousand dollars matched due to our board members' connections at Corporation X Y Z." So then we have five thousand dollars in hand. We have five thousand dollars pledged. We're coming to you for the next ten thousand dollars. Do you understand? Do you, do you see the difference of that impact? Many fun, fun, uh, uh, many foundations or uh, or organizations will ask you: Has your board members supported? Have your board members pledged or supported this initiative? If so, how much money have they raised? That is like a fundamental question that many of them ask. And if your answer is like, "Well, our board members don't raise money," or they've given zero, their answer to you almost certainly will be, "Well, we're not going to support this. Why should we support something if the?" directors, the, the board of directors of your organization can or won't support that. Why should I do that? You, you understand what I'm saying? The, your board member need to be the primary and first uh, source of funding, especially if it's a big new bull project. If they can't do that, they should not be board members. Point blank. Uh, that's a whole bit other video, but we'll come back to the board members not being able to or unwilling to raise funds going forward. Number three, uh, the best way to, and this goes into the point number two, uh, another great way to have uh, funds raised is to get board members in organizations that can then give you money. Okay, so this I'm alluding to point number two right here. So a big part of your annual goals should be to, to continually to refresh and, and place board members in, in organizations that will allow them to raise funds for you. Right now, where I work on my day job, that's something that we're looking at. We're looking for high-level uh, board placements for uh, the mid-level executives or high-level executives uh, that work for the corporation I work for. They're looking for these opportunities. And an expectation of those board memberships is there'll be some fundraising. That is the expectation. So you as a nonprofit person, you as a, uh, fundra a fundraising professional, you should be putting the word out there in your local community, within your lo local like corporate um, uh, environment, hey, you know, we have we have board openings. Do you have some volunteers who would be interested in that? Now, again, you, you can't just be kind of like a limp wristed kind of like ass like that. You should like, uh, for example, if your um, if your organization is focused on youth employment, for example, and you uh, then are even more folks, let's say, in STEM, STEM youth, STEM youth work or STEM youth employment, and there's a bunch of STEM or you know business, heavy manufacturing science organizations around you, then you should have a board packet that really leans into that. You know, we have a great internship program. We teach kids from uh, you know low to moderate income communities uh, how to embrace the sciences, not just as like a like a hobby, but as something where they want to build their careers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera put together a good board packet. Uh, it doesn't have to be overly produced, but it should be very clear about roles and responsibilities. Be strategic with your ass, and then reach out to the organizations that are in your community. Believe me, someone some, someone there is looking for board membership opportunities. And to my earlier point, the expectation must be written down as a condition of board membership. Our expectation is that board members either personally raise $5,000 or they are able to bring in through their own, you know, initiatives or their, their community connections, $5,000. You need to set some kind of fundraising amount and expectation amongst your board members or again, you're kind of just wasting their time. So to recap, three great ways, three great hacks to increase your fundraising success are number one, short, short sweet and concise applications. Two, have money already. 
which is a great way to do that, is point number three. Have, have strategically placed board members who can continuously generate fundraising dollars either through their own pocketbook or through their own connections. I hope this is helpful. Please let me know what other fundraising uh, things have been helpful, especially during like this time of COVID. If you like this video, please give it a like or a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Stephen Hernandez with Stephen Hernandez's Nonprofit Fundamentals. You can check out some of my other videos here. You can follow me on uh, Instagram at Stephen Hernandez 875 or find me on uh, my podcast, Stephen Hernandez is Nonprofit Fundamentals and Relationship Fundamentals, wherever podcasts are, uh, are found. Thank you so much and take care.